Right, welcome to the channel. Today we'll be installing a finder buzzer on the quad. And a reason for me particularly installing the finder buzzer is because I've been trying to narrow down on all the different fail safe uh, options there are out there. We have already done the GPS video, which I'll link in the description if you guys want to check that out. And uh, the next form of uh, fail safe in terms of finding the quad in any uh, event of an uh, accident or crash or anything like that is to find a buzzer and um, the reason why I've selected a finder buzzer is because with traditional quads we just have a little buzzer on the flight controller and then you link that in Bay of Beta Flight to beep when you flip a switch which is really quite helpful if you guys crash in grass or any type of uh, scenario like that makes it a lot easier to find but now any problem with that is if you crash hard enough to eject your battery there's going to be no buzzer to beep which means it's going to be harder to find the quad or you're not going to find the quad at all and the last thing I want is to lose this quad I spent a lot of money on this quad and if I were to lose this quad I will cry Anyways, so uh, a lot of people use the single buzzer where you just put it on the flight controller and yeah, it's mapped to your controller through beta flight and that just beeps. But for me, I need to know that there's going to be something beeping even if the battery is detached or anything. And that's where this finder buzzer comes in. So once we do the unboxing, you'll be able to see there is a backup battery on the finder buzzer which will beep in the event of power loss if your battery gets ejected during the crash and then you are safe knowing that there is going to be something beeping let's say you flying up a mountain and you crash and the battery detaches there will be something beeping um, it beeps for about 30 hours which is great and um, yeah I just think it's a great addition to the quad I think a lot of you can also benefit from it so yeah, let's get it installed. Right, so as we move on to the unboxing part of the video, let's get it unboxed. So this is just a regular finder buzzer that I picked up from a local hobby shop, um, Flying Robot in South Africa. But if you guys aren't in South Africa, you should be able to pick it up from any type of hobby shop that sells FPV stuff, or you could, uh, I know Banggood sells them and Alibaba sells them. But yeah, there aren't many variations uh, inside the box. You just get your your connector that connects to the buzzer and then obviously your endpoints that will need to be soldered to your flight controller. Uh, there's only three wires on this uh, ground, five volt, and then your battery telemetry wire. I say telemetry, but it's not really telemetry. I will explain when we do the install what this third wire is for, but it's nothing to difficult for you all to understand and then yeah this is the money so find a buzzer it is really small i think it only weighs about six grams which is really nice for weight saving always want to have uh, the lightest quad out there with anything that you're doing whether you're racing or long ranging or um, any type of uh, quad design but uh, yeah so you, there are a few variations uh, mine you'll see has two leds on the board as well which will uh, beep and you know, go off with the buzzer uh, to create a big lighting flash wherever the quad is uh, crashed. Obviously, if you crash in the day, that's not going to be very helpful. But if you are flying sort of late afternoon and lose the quad and have to walk and search for a while, if it does move into darkness, those will definitely help. Um, and then below the finder buzzer, you'll see that there's a little lipo so I, I believe this does charge through the quad so every time you connect your quad it will charge up this battery as well um, I'm sure you can just solder up some wires to those battery connectors over there and then make alternative arrangements to uh, get it charged but uh, it seems like it will have some power in already from the factory 
But uh, yeah, that's just about it. You just got some double-sided tape. You got your battery. Uh, obviously, this battery does power the the LEDs and the buzzer in the event that you do crash and your your battery your main battery disconnects. Um, it will power this for about I believe it's 30 hours. So a full little battery like this will power this beeper for about 30 hours. I don't know how true that is. I think it'll only do about 10. But uh, depending on how much these lights are flashing and it's also yeah whichever one you guys get uh, will depend on how long it will flash for but I mean you only need about six to ten hours worst case scenario don't know how long you would search for a quad after that but yeah let's get into the installation right so as we move on to the installation part of this video um, you'll see that yeah the wire you're provided with has three wires on your connection wires so obviously you've got ground as your black five volt on the red and then your yellow wire will act as your signal wire to trigger the uh, buzzer response. Um, and if I can just explain that to you, you're gonna have to check what uh, flight controller you have. But in terms of mine, I'm flying this BDB F7 and uh, your ground will obviously go to ground uh, where you can find a pad. There's normally pads set out for uh, that on the different uh, whatever flight control you have there should be an extra one if not one already set out for the buzzer then we have on the newer flight controllers at least uh, most of the old ones will have them as well we have bz plus and bz minus so if i can just bring up a diagram to explain that to you bz plus is just going to be it, it is a buzzer tab bz meaning buzzer but bz means uh, BZ plus is just 5 volt. You can be rest assured that you'll get 5 volt out there and in on most of the flight controllers that is just going to be a pad that's linked to buzzer. So your flight controller is going to know the buzzer is connected to that and when you do all your uh, switches and uh, when your quad power is on and that it is going to send power to the buzzer to make it beep in all the different chimes that it needs to whether your quad is uh, powering up or whether you flipped your switch on your controller to make it beep. Now, the last thing is the BZ minus pad. So that BZ minus over here, uh, which it's situated over here on mine, you'll have to check where it is on yours. But the BZ minus is what we're going to use for this yellow wire, okay? This yellow wire that we've been uh, provided with on the plug. Remember, we've done BZ plus, which is where your red's gonna go. We have ground. Your signal wire is going to go to BZ minus, and from what I've seen from that, uh, and all the research that I've done, is that is where the buzzer is going to see that your battery has been disconnected, because on your conventional buzzers, I've just got a small one here from an older quad, but uh, your normal buzzers are just going to have your five volt and your ground. And this isn't going, obviously this doesn't have a battery on either to be able to beep when your main battery does get disconnected. But the reason why it needs the third little wire is to be able to see that, okay, the quad has lost power. Uh, I need to trigger the buzzer to go off now. And that is the whole purpose of the other wire. I'm not going to be soldering in this video because I already had these wires installed and um, I've just gotten a new... Uh, find a buzzer as my old one is faulty. So sorry about that, but I hope I've explained it simply enough. Um, let's get into testing. Right, so let's move on to the actual test. Uh, we finished our soldering. I have plugged in the uh, buzzer uh, to the pads that we just soldered on. So that's on over there. And now we basically just need to test that it works. So in theory, I should be able to plug this in. It will do all its chimes with the flight controller turning on and leveling and all of that, getting ready to fly. But once power is disconnected from your main power input, which is your battery that you're going to be flying with, the battery needs to trigger. So this is obviously in the event of a crash where your battery detaches, you want this buzzer to beep by itself. Remember, it's got its own little battery on, so that'll keep beeping for about 10 hours. 
depending on which model you get. We also have lights on this one, which will be pretty cool to see. But yeah, so let's just give it a little test. We're just gonna plug in over here and see what happens. Right, so it's turned on how it's supposed to. It's done all the little beeps that you normally have on your uh, quad when you set it up. So just with a normal buzzer, it does the same thing. Uh, everything works as it should. Uh, the last thing we need to check now is removing the main power. So in theory, we should still have, the, the beeper should stay on and start beeping after a little bit, after it's noticed that there is no uh, power connected to the quad. So let's simulate a crash quickly by disconnecting the main power. Right, so we can see it's still beeping over there. Well, it's got its little flashlight busy going off now. Um, it probably takes about 30 seconds to kick in. Um, but once it does, we should see those lights flash and the beeper start going. So let's see what it does. And there it goes. It seems like it beeps every four seconds and it will keep doing that for however long the battery lasts. Uh, I have not tested how long that is, but it should be for about 10 hours, uh, maybe even 15. But uh, yeah, so we've seen how that works now. Um, the only thing when you do install this is you need to be able to turn this guy off. So if I show you guys over here, there is a button on top here and um, you have to hold that in to turn off the buzzer and let it know that you found the quad. So if you just hold that in for about four seconds. There we are. So that's sorted. Um, we're just going to need to figure out how we're going to put that in the quad to be able to turn it off in the event of a crash. I, think I might maybe do it like that because I can then trigger it from over here. See this little hole if I just get you guys to focus over here. Just like that. So you can see it over there. Then I can like fit an Allen key or something in there. Uh, maybe I can do it from this side, depending on what, mm. what's going to work best. But yeah, so uh, that should be good. We'll see how it reacts, uh, how I'll get that installed. But that is the deal with the finder buzzer. So let's get on to the beta flight part of the video. Right, so onto the beta flight part of the video, we set up the buzzer. Uh, let's open up our beta flight, connect to the quad. So the quad is connected. Um, we just need to uh, go over to our, first let's just make sure our receiver is in fact working, which I don't think it is right now, but that doesn't matter. Uh, once we go over to modes, we're going to want to set up our beeper switch. So if you guys don't know how to do that, you're going to need to go onto your radio and set up a switch that you're going to use for beeper. This is for when the quad is powered on and you just want to uh, set up that beeper function. So I will quickly just do a short uh, demonstration on how you can set up mixes on your remote. So let's do that quickly. Right, so on your controller, you're going to want to find your mixes uh, tab. Uh, it's going to be over here for me, I believe. Right, and then I do already have a beep uh, button set up, a beep switch. But I will just show you how to set it up. So you'll just select another channel. And you'll go in right to where you'll click on source. And then you'll notice that when you flip a switch, on source, so let's just flip the switch off. It's giving a, a uh, the screen's readjusting to the screen. Sorry about that, but it does seem to work. So yeah, once you flip a switch, it is going to see that. So you can just flip the switch and then select that switch. You can then name it something, oh, wrong thing. Uh, you can call it beep, which will just be easier for you to know what it is. And then you just hit return. And then we're going to look for that switch on beta flight. Um, mine's obviously on channel 10, 
which I'll show you on beta flight, but I'm just going to delete this one because I don't need it. I just wanted to show you guys how to actually set it up. So let's go back on beta flight and see how that works. Right, so switching back to beta flight, um, I'm just going to reconnect my quad so that it can connect to my radio. Um, obviously, we've now done the mix. We've set up the mix on beta flight, I mean on the remote. Um, so the remote now knows where that beeper switch is. If I flip my beeper switch, you'll see there on AUX 6 that it is in fact working. Um, so yeah, uh, once we go into modes, you'll see here, you will add your range, you'll click add range, you'll then select the, uh, the AUX channel that the beeper is connected to on your radio and you'll see if I switch mine it works so that's all you got to do in order to get just the beep function on your radio um, you don't have to set up the auto beep on beta flight that is pre-programmed into the finder buzzer so you won't have to do that but yeah that's about it for um, connecting it up to the beta flight um, aux channel in order to get your normal beeps we will test that quickly so if i just quickly uh, disconnect from beta flight real quick and disconnect the quad right so as we connect back up um let's just make sure that everything works so we're just going to connect up normally to the quad there's that find the buzzer beeping up as it should um, let's test quickly on the remote with the switch that we just set up so i set up the beeper to this switch and it should still work if i trigger it so there we are that's working just fine and now for the final test we just want to disconnect the battery and make sure that it will beep once power has been removed so let's disconnect the battery There we are, so we've got the telemetry lost from the radio. And let's see if the finder buzzer does what it's supposed to. There we are. So you'll see it beeps every four seconds with the light on. If you lose it uh, late afternoon or at night, uh, which is going to be really helpful to find and once again to turn that off all you've got to do is turn off or hold in your uh, little button on the side and there we are it's turned off until the next time you power on and that's going to do it for this video guys so uh, it's not the hardest installation and it's quite a good thing to have in terms of uh, what we do in the sport and how often batteries do get disconnected in crashes but uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next one. See ya.